Good afternoon, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. I'm, I'm awake now. <laughs> but um, this video, I do have a video that a brother and I yesterday kind of went through the notes together. Um, and um, I'm still waiting on a definitive green light on that one that a brother of mine, uh, uh, my friend, my beloved friend, um, Alexander Hartley, he and I kind of went through the uh, this one video that I have not done yet. But um, that may still come today. I'm waiting on the Lord on that. And also, like I've said uh, in the other videos today, that um, there's there going to be a big video coming, um, which a brother kind of passed off on to me. It's like, hey, Brad, here, you know. Um, and um, it's going to be about worship. That's, and that's not going to be a small video. You know, there's going to be a few scriptures <laughs> Just keep an eye out for that. That's Lord willing will be sometime this weekend. If not this weekend, it will definitely be sometime next week for sure. Hey, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. We ain't going to leave no wobble room, brother. So, but for this video, this is kind of kind of requested I, I a sister brought this to my attention and she did not specifically say Brad could you do a video on this she did not but she brought it to my attention and um, we are going to look a little bit at the word Trump and the variations thereof trumpet Trumpets and trumpeteers. Okay? And very quickly, uh, I, I, I got to mention this to you. Okay? Um, I was, the, the name for this video that I first thought of is like the Trump or the sound of the Trump. And, you know, brethren, <laughs> there are some people out there that I have seen with my own eyes, heard with my own ears, and even online people have reference to this about the last Trump. And there are people out there who have tried to tie <coughs> President Trump as being part of scripture. You know, the last Trump, the last president of the United States, who's going to call himself sovereign. <laughs> you know, because Trump, of course, had the Cyrus anointing, remember. <laughs> um, I wish that was hyperbole. Hyperbole. I wish that was exaggeration to prove a point. Uh, no, there are actually people out there who, you know, See, Trump's in the Bible because the last Trump. Ah. These are, those are the types of people that are drawn to twits, such as you easy believism heretics. Ah. 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 Now, of course, excluding the babe and novice, but if they're calling themselves, you know, Christians and oh, I've been, I've been saved for years and years and years, and you think Trump is specifically named in the scriptures? <laughs> I, that's nonsense. That's not even worth talking about. But okay, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Go to. The very first mention of the derivative of the word Trump, trumpet. We're going to Exodus chapter 19. Now, the word Trump 
Trump, uh, Trump and its derivatives, trumpet, Trump, trumpets, trumpeteers, appears within the authorized version of the scriptures 105 times. Like in the book of Joshua, for example, there are in one verse, the uh, variation of the word trumpet appears three times in one verse, and likewise in several other passages of scripture. But it primarily appears 105 times within the scriptures. 13 times, coincidence, in the New Testament. The books that are in the collection of the New Testament and within the New Testament. You'll see what I'm talking about. Exodus chapter 19. We are going to be utilizing what is commonly called the Law of First Mention. And and some of you bickering twits. The law of first mention is not mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> go, go, go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Bo boast yourselves of your vain belief. Go, go away and cheer. Rah, rah, rah for your next attack piece. Go, go. Go right ahead. Go along, okay? Exodus chapter 19, verse 13, the first mention of the word trump, or trumpet, excuse me. Exodus chapter 19, verse 13. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Okay, now, stop right here. When the trumpet, when the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. What do we see? Right away. The trumpet is sounded, and what happens? They shall come up to the mount. Come on up. Okay? Some people will bring up the argument about, so far, the, um, the horn. Okay? They'll say, well, it's actually a, a so far. Um, no, it says trumpet in the authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, which are given by inspiration. Perfect. Inerrant. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, wanted the word trumpet in there. Okay? All right? But some will bring up the argument of a so far. It's actually a so far, not a trumpet. And if you have ever, by the way, heard an actual so far sound with a trumpet sound, there are two different sounds. If you've ever noticed that. Okay, but what do we see? When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. First appearance of the word trumpet within the scriptures. And what do we see as pertaining to the law first mentioned? Soundeth long, noise, they shall come up to the mount. To come up to the mount, to move. Or to be moved. Okay? And also in Exodus 19, look at verse, what did I write there? 18? 18. Uh, no, it's 16. Yes, verse 16. Okay? And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. The voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Okay? Now right there in these two verses, what do I, in these two verses that we look at, Law first mentioned the very first time when the in verse 13, 
When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Okay? And verse 16. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Hmm. Okay? Hinge this for future reference within this video because we're going to come back to this. Okay? Verse 19. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, okay, verse 13, when the, when the trumpet soundeth long, verse 19, and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Let's read verse 20. And the Lord said, come down upon Mount Sinai. On the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Very interesting, isn't that? Hinge this. Exodus 19. Okay? Now go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. We're not going through all 105 references. Okay? Exodus chapter 20, verse 18. After the giving of the Ten Commandments, by the way. Okay? And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain shaking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Okay? The noise of the trumpet. The noise of the trumpet. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. The noise of the trumpet kind of like, whoa, backed them off. Okay? Okay? Now go to Leviticus. So we see thus far that the word trumpet and its there, uh, variations uh, appears one, two, three, four, four times in Exodus. Go to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 24. Leviticus chapter 23. Let's read verses 23 and 24. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation, and that is trump, Yom Tehura, Yom Tehura, the day of the blowing of trumpets, which in the uh, feasts of the Lord, okay, within the seven feasts of the Lord, the fifth is the sound of the trumpet. Mm. Ain't that interesting, isn't it? Okay. And now go to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 9, and you're going to see trumpet appear twice in the same verse. Okay. Leviticus 25, verse 9. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement, day of atonement, as I am, I uh, got to check, oh, Yom Kippur, day of atonement, okay? In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Yes. Yes. And of course, the day of atonement is the sixth feast. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So we see it appear three times in Leviticus. Okay? 
Now we're going to go to numbers. Trumpet in its derivative forms does not appear in Genesis or in Deuteronomy. Okay, we're just focusing on the Torah right now, the first five books of Moses. Okay, go to, Le uh, to Numbers chapter 10. Okay, Numbers chapter 10. Take your pardon, brethren. One quick second. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, brethren. Coffee. Numbers chapter 10. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 10, verses 2 on to verse 4. Let's uh, actually, verses 1 on to verse 4 in Numbers chapter 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the journeying of the camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. Okay, there's the two references right there in verses 2 and 4. Now let's read verses 8 through 9. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall go, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, plural, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Very interesting, huh? And let's, of course, read verse 10. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets, plural, over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. Okay? Blow them over your, blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and sacrifices. Very interesting, yes. Okay, now go to Numbers 29, verse 1. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. And what is that? That's right. Okay. And then in Numbers chapter 31, verse 6. And Moses sent them to the war a thousand of every tribe, them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. So thus far, okay, now that is the references to trumpet in its uh, variations within the Torah. Okay, that's it. We see what? The trumpet is assigned with what? moving. And what is necessary for a trumpet to be used? It's called a wind instrument. You know, you blow into the trumpet. Here's a little science experiment for you. Okay? Take your hand and put it in front of your mouth. And when you are speaking, do you not feel air pressing against your hand when you are speaking? A wind instrument? Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Wind instrument associated with a trumpet. Obviously. And we see it is for, uh, we see associations with movement and also with remembrance and also with 
shock in a way. Yes? Now, <clears throat> let's look at another Old Testament reference, which is in part of the books, which is collectively called the New Testament. Those of you who study to shoe yourselves approved unto God, that you are a work, being a workman that is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you know what I mean when I say that. If you do not, the first four gospel accounts, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? Before the crucifixion, doctrinally, it is the Old Testament. Jesus Christ, God our Father, hadn't died for our sins on the cross yet and shed his blood to make atonement for our sins yet. So doctrinally, it was still the Old Testament. That's what that means, okay? Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> now note this. <clears throat> we will read verses 1 on to verse 4 in Matthew chapter 6. And note what our Lord is using this refer uh, using this for. Remember, movement, shock, and remembrance. Okay, or to declare something instead of shock, I should say. Okay, instead of shock. Excuse me. Declare something. We should say. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Note this. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Hey, look at me, look at me. Do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest thine alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. <laughs> uh, your left hand be ignorant, right? Um, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Proclaiming with a trumpet. Okay? Bert, look at me, look at me, look at me. Grabs your attention. Grabs everybody's att attention. And what our Lord is using it there for. And where is the other within the gospel accounts? The only time it appears. Where is that? Where else is it? That's right. Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> and let's read a good context in this. Verses 29 on to verse 35. Okay? In Matthew chapter 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. The church of the living God, the body of Christ, is not on the earth when this is happening. Okay? Okay? He's describing the time of Jacob's trouble in Matthew chapter 24. Okay? We, the church of the living God, the body of Christ are not going to be here for that. But guess what? A bunch of you Christians will be. Unfortunately for you. Quite unfortunately for you. Let's continue. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. 
And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet going to war, like go forth to battle, movement, remember, and his angels, hi, that's us, okay? We will be like the angels, okay? Remember John went and uh, bowed down to that one angel, and he said, see that thou do it not? I am of thy, I am, uh, I am like your fellow servant, okay? I just paraphrase that, forgive me. Uh, when we come down with him at his second coming, we are going to be like the angels of heaven. Okay, so <clears throat> let's continue. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another, to, a, to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Okay? Do you see that in verse 31? With, at the sound of the trumpet, a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, and he, okay, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay? Now, for our current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, which uh, appertains unto you and I. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Doctrine specifically for us today, in this, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 We will be reading from verses 1 oh, on to verse 12, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 12. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Okay? But he that prophesieth speaking to you from the scriptures, through the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Prophesying. Okay? Of course, another aspect of being of prophesying is foretelling of future events. But prophesying for us today, specifically, speaking the word of God, the scriptures, through the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church, the body, not those buildings. Okay? I would that ye all spake with tongues. And this tongues is not that. Blah, 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 blah. No, tongues is languages. Read Acts chapter 2, you Pentecatholic care Catholics, okay? The languages, the tongues are listed, okay? It's not this jibba-jabba that you twits do. No, no, okay? 
I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. And you see, I, I, you know, you'll see things like this if you look for it on uh, YouTube. I've seen it with my own eyes, where some twit will sit there doing his abibla, shatai, botai, whatever, and then some guy will just pray, blah, 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 and then blurt out something as if he's interpreting it. Yeah, the devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And even things without life-giving sound, whether by pipe, pipe, okay, wind instrument, or harp, strings, okay? Except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Remember in Exodus chapter 19, I told you to hinge that. Okay, first mention, what it correlates onto. Okay, remember, let's continue. So likewise, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. He gives it to you, share it. And what happens when you confront these blah, 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 guys? You blaspheme the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but, oh, you, you, you don't have that gift. You're, you're one of the laity because you don't have this gift. Pride, you see? Pride. Pride. My wife knows a tongue talker. Blah, 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 blah. Lost as a blind man, lost as a blind man running a race, but has the gift of tongues, which is, you know, a mark of the upper echelons. Sorry, I had to steal that from you. Okay? Yeah. And if you've ever had a chance to, you know, uh, you know, with a tongue talker, uh, uh, excuse, excuse me, let's, can we, can we, can we talk? Please keep your jibber jabber away. Let's, let's go through a few things, okay? Okay, but, verse 8, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? And 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> Verses 50 on to verse 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the 
last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed at the last trump like i said to you at the beginning of this video <laughs> there are people who look at that and say well try to say that this is talking about president trump that he's the last trump he's going to declare himself sovereign and make america great again and uh, yeah, <clears throat> what is a trump? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Okay, see the semicolon there? For the trumpet shall sound. Uh, trump is what is the sound of the trumpet. Trump. Okay, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. See it? Now it's connected there. Okay, but let's continue. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. This is talking about the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, by the way. But if you haven't figured that one out already, okay? O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, whether it is in your eyes, mighty are mundane. Okay? Now, okay. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. 1 Corinthians 15. In a passage clearly talking about the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 now. What a, what a shock, huh? What a shock. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 4. <clears throat> Verses 13 on to verse 18. Now, pay attention to this. 13 on verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, that ye sorrow not, as others which have no hope. Our hope is the blessed hope, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Wrongly called the pre tribulation rapture. Okay? <clears throat> For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Okay? The dead are going to rise first. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. Right there. That's where, uh, who is it? The Jehoes. Try to say it's the uh, um, it's Michael. And they'll go to Daniel. No, no. With the voice of, uh, of the archangel. Very, very loud. Unto us. Who hear him. Okay, check this out. Wait, wait, wait. And with the trump of God. 
as the sound of a trumpet. The voice of the archangel with the, with the trump of God. And if you go back to um, Daniel, okay, what it's getting at is for those of us who are of his body. But wait. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, when our Lord was going into Jerusalem, and he said, Father, glorify thy son. And uh, he spake from heaven. And the uh, disciples heard it, but others thought that it thundered. There was a distinction there. Okay? Remember, hold on, let me find that for you. All right, sorry about that, brethren. I have to find this. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. <clears throat> John chapter 12. <clears throat> John chapter 12, verses 24, 23, on to verse 29. John chapter 12, verse 23, under verse 29. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Before this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by heard it and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Note that. Okay. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel speak, spake to him. An angel spake to him. Okay? Now, also remember, brethren, go back to Exodus chapter 19. Okay? Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19, verse 13, or, or verse, yes, verse 13. Okay? Okay? There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Come up to the mount. And, verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 1, <clears throat> on to verse 9, 1 on to verse 9, excuse me. 
John chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Leadeth them out. Oh, keep reading. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them, because he was making a reference unto the catching away. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All, circle that all, by the way, that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, <clears throat> go across. And we will read verses 24 on to verse 30. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one spirit, soul, and body. Okay? What does this mean? We, the Church of the Living God, I truly believe, and we just saw, uh, I just showed you why I believe this. We are going to hear our Lord call us up. By name. How is he going to call everybody's name at the same time? Uh, he, he's, he's God, okay? He can do that. But he, we're going to hear him. I believe that the lost are going to hear something that is thunder, that does not recognize, does not go into their ears because they are not his, of his sheep. We're going to hear our names called. And it's going to be very loud, very loud. And as we saw in Exodus chapter 19, go back there, Exodus chapter 19, okay, as we saw, verse 13, there shall not in hand touch it, go ahead and read the context on your own time, there shall not in hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount, come up. And to contrast, verse 16, And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there, were th that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Okay, look at verse 13. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And verse 16, So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. 
I truly believe that we are going to hear the Lord's voice call us by name. Uh, those of us who are of his body, his sheep, the church of the living God, we're going to be called out. Okay? And those who are not, they will hear something as a thunder, unrecognizable to their ears, because they don't hear him. Because they are not of his sheep. See? Okay? So, we are going to hear the Lord's voice loud. And those who are not saved are going to hear something that is going to what? So that all the people that was in the camp trembled because they do not hear his voice. It's going to be unrecognizable to them. Okay? And um, there are other references, such as in Hebrews, the word, the variation of trumpet appears 13 times in the New Testament, as I said unto you. Uh, after this dispensation, once in the book of Hebrews, specifically written on to the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble, and in Revelation, okay, in Revelation, you check this out on your own time, okay? Revelation 1, verse 10. Revelation 4, verse 1. Revelation 8, verse 2, 6, 13. Revelation 9, 14. And Revelation 8, 22, uh, 22, where it is trumpeteers. You do that on your own time, okay? But as far as that is concerned, um, we, the Church of the Living God, are going to hear our Lord call us by name. We're going to be called up. And those who are not of us, they're going to hear something. But it's not going to be his voice that they're going to hear. To them it's going to be thunder or something like that. See? Okay? That's how I would address that. Okay? Hopefully that helps. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I'm not going to put the name Trump in the title of this video. I don't want those weirdos about the Trump, Donald Trump stuff. Um, that's going to be for it. Uh, I love you. Thank you so much for watching, if you do. Like I said, that video that uh, my dear friend, my beloved brother Alexander and I kind of uh, went over, um, that video may still come today. Don't know yet. But like I said, there's, there's going to be a big one coming here soon. So I love you, my brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. And we'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.